Well, it's mullet run. You know, we're kind of in the middle of the mullet run. And so we're fishing around the jetty. You know, the, the Ponce Inlet jetty, the Canaveral jetty, and the Sebastian jetty really get, get lit up. Uh, the fish, you know, fish congregate at those jetties, especially this time of the year, because they, they know that there's mullet that are gonna be streaming down the beach and coming around those jetties. So it gives them a, a really easy ambush point. Um, and the mullet are coming down by the hundreds of millions. I can't count that high, but I, I ran out of fingers. But it's one of those things where it's a really good opportunity for some really easy fishing if the conditions come together. And hopefully, they'll, hopefully they'll come together for us today. We've got a couple of bites so far. There's a pretty good school of fish just off to our right. Um, so it gets a little crowded around the jetties this time of the year, but it, you know, it's kind of, it is what it is. Try everybody tries to be courteous and not you know not get too close to each other and cut each other off that kind of thing. So, but it's it can be really good and as the as the activity level gets better and better, uh, you'll start to see fish you know free jumping, flying through the mullet. You'll you'll see a lot of activity out here that all on the surface uh, as these fish really get fired up to feed. Mama's hungry, so she needs a snook. She loves those snook. I think she loves snook more than me. I'm pretty positive about it, actually. Fish gets off of the you know, Get him little up bit away. Boat. Yeah. You know, that's what we, that's what the charter boat guys, when they'd hook a sailfish and they'd get him up close to the boat and the fish would get off before they caught it really. Ah, it's a Palm Beach release. You know, hey, we got a release. No, you didn't. <laughs> Jack Tater.
sharp tooth pompano. <laughs> Some people like to eat them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get it. Won't be Not me. Not me. Not me. Oh, they're probably good. I don't know. You know, you gotta you gotta let the flounder eat because he's got all these teeth. You know, he's an ambush predator, and he'll run up and he'll grab him and he'll kill the thing with his teeth, and before he swallows it. So if you feel that the initial grab, and he's chewing on it, trying to kill it with all those teeth, and you set the hook, you're not going to hook him. You got to let him swallow the bait, and then come tight, really softly, and then you'll hook a lot more of them. And you got to give them a good, you know, eight or ten seconds. Once you feel that initial bite, you know, you got to count as slowly as you can the eight seconds don't go one two three four five six eight because that's what you want to do the longer you let him eat the better chance you have of catching them so but flounders they'll they'll congregate together in packs of little ones and big ones so if you catch a couple of little ones that doesn't mean you need to move on you might be able to catch a big one there still one of my favorite places to fish for them is when you're, you're inside the inlet where you have residential docks and a boat that's sitting in the water and you can tell it's been in the water not on a lift but it's in the water and it's getting used a lot, let's say. You can tell that it's been blown out so there's a big hole underneath the boat. There's usually flounder under there during the winter time because they move into the inlets and they'll go to that deep spot underneath the boat in the shade and that's where you catch the big ones. Go ahead and start with this one, Dave. Okay. We'll put a shrimp on. All right. We're gonna give this guy a head hook when we're trying to catch the triple tail. Jim likes to hook him in the head wants the hook to come out right about where their horn's coming out of their head. Like that. How's that? Beautiful. It smells like a triple tail. Down about 32 feet or so when, when we went by it before. So we're gonna try and target that one fish that is on the side of the chain right there. So we went by it with our regular type of sounder yeah. here and you can't see really any definition there's a there's a larger fish signature there's some bait and stuff in here not like you could see the definition here of the chain and the single fish right next to it wow so that's that's the benefit to the higher definition side scan and, and, and down scan type of scenarios is that you get you get an alternate look at what you're looking at. The older older style transducers are still fine. They still mark things, but you don't know exactly what you're marking. With the new side scan technology, you can you can see it much better. so that I wouldn't break him off. And now we've, we've driven the boat around the chain. He's come off of the chain now. So I know my, I know my line's damaged, so I don't want to put a whole lot of pressure on him. But the, we've, we've averted you know, catastrophe on that buoy chain. So now we can just concentrate on just letting him wear himself out. And once he does, we'll put him in the net. Back to the tail. The 
beautiful. Looks just like a speck of perch, <laughs> but bigger. Yeah. This is one of my favorite fish to catch. We don't get them all year, normally in the cooler months. But uh, these things are incredible eating. They're the best. Very white, firm meat. I'm glad we stopped, man. <laughs> no kidding, man. <laughs> Well, it was a great early September day here in Cape Canaveral. Got here early this morning, uh, right when the tide was coming out of the inlet, and we really smoked the snook. How many did we catch? I lost count. 15 or 20 yeah. at least, you know. Uh, and then we came out and, and hit the buoy line and caught a really nice triple tail that Jorge's gonna get to eat tonight. Yeah, he's he's a little bit of a first spring right up. Yeah, the cameraman, you know, sometimes they have a hard time. But they're gonna be taking care of it. Take care of it. <laughs> Well, it's interesting because we had a, you know, we had a good flounder bite going, but we had a full front that pushed through left. Right. And it seemed to have shut that whole thing down, but it fired up the jetties here at the Canaveral area. So, you know, as long as there's a mullet, fish that want to eat them, I'm, I'm willing to play. Yeah, me too. I'm, I really appreciate it, buddy. Oh, anytime, had a great time. Anytime, anytime, great time. Anytime. All right, make sure you guys go out there and comment, like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel because daddy needs to get paid.